for community acquired pneumonia and hospital acquired pneumonia. To be able to describe the goal of therapy, and it should be correctly formulated, the pharmacotherapy management of pneumonia. Pneumonia is defined as inflammation of the lung parenchyma of infective origin and catalyzed by consolidation. Consolidation is seen on the X ray and it is due to the mixture of bacteria, inflammatory exudates, and white blood cells. Pneumonia is classified as community acquired pneumonia and hospital acquired pneumonia. So let's start with community acquired pneumonia. The British Thoracic Society defines CAP in patients admitted to hospital as the symptoms and signs which are consistent with an acute lower pulmonary tract infection that is associated with the new radiographic shadowing for which there is no other explanation not primary edema or infection yeah. simply bacteria of origin the illness is primarily the reason for hospital admission and is managed, managed as a pneumonia so on presentation when the patient visits the hospital, then to be classified as a community acquired pneumonia and admitted. Okay. The most common occurring bacteria in community acquired pneumonia. Stephacocus pneumoniae constitutes of 50 60 percent of all cases of COVID acquired pneumonia, followed by mycoplasma pneumonia, which consists of 10 percent of the cases, then chlamydia pneumonia, also 10 percent, then staph aureus, the other viruses, 10 percent. Then, after about the 10 percent, we have hemophilus influenzae, which consists of 5 percent of all. Or cap cases. Staph aureus is very uncommon, but the mortality is pretty high once the patient is diagnosed with the cap due to staph aureus. Therefore, you need to appropriately prescribe the antibiotics and manage it as if appropriate. So, what should they take home? 50 60 percent of all the cases of CAP is the focus pneumonia. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Question time. Which of the following microorganisms consists about 60 percent of all CAP cases? A. Hemophilus influenzae. Hello? Uh, pause. Pause. Okay. Regionera, Neuroferia. Pause. Pause. Ramaidia, Molin. Pause. Pause. This is the Pogas Molin. Okay. Clinical features of CAP. Usually, the patient presents with cough, pyruritate sputum. This is sputum with the past discharge. Then, of course, fever. The patient will also experience with pleuritic pain. Then, breathlessness. Now, the initial diagnosis of CAP requires that you do assessment, whether it's severe or non-severe. And that assessment will guide the treatment. Okay? If it's severe, 
the treatment is different. If it's a mild, the treatment is different. Also, it depends on the type of microorganism. Okay. Also, type of microorganism will dictate which treatments to use. General investigations, chest X-ray has to be done. Remember, we talked about the pluricate. We have consolidation in the lines. The full blood count. Yeah, we have to do that. Then electrolytes and liver function test. C-reactive protein, which is most common in inflammatory disease. Remember, we said pneumonia is simply inflammation of gland parenchyma. So we expect C-reactive protein to increase. Also, oxygen saturation. In pneumonia, the oxygen tends to be low. If you all will remember, COVID-19 is a pneumonia, and no wonder people are put on the oxygen because there is poor exchange of gases when the benign parenchymas are in French. Also, you need to do arterial blood gases assessment. Okay. I don't know what to do more. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we can go ahead and stop at the, the, the address. I have a question on uh, on the diagnosis. Okay, why yeah. are we why are we performing this investigation? Urea and liver function tests. Oh, that's good question. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're talking about urea and what? Liver function tests. Yes, urea and liver function tests. Okay, urea will help will, will help us to stratify if the patient has severe pneumonia or mild pneumonia, you see as we go on. And the other reason could also be, you could, have, you could also probably use some medicine which may be renotoxic and you just want to have that baseline. Same applies in the liver function test. Okay? We know that most medicines are metabolized by the liver, and you want to know the liver function test before you give the medication. So that if there is any elevation, once you start the medication, you can point to the medication. Okay, is it okay? Yes, that's fine, thank you. Good. Okay. Microbiological count, we can also do microbiological, blood culture, sputum culture, and sensitivity. Blood culture, I want to identify the type of microorganism. For same as sputum culture, very subjective, whatever the isolates you have to sensitivity testing to see which medications are resistant. Well, which medication are sensitive, which medications are efficacy to certain bacteria or not. For Legionella and Chlamydia, they require specific investigation and depending on the severity and the history. What, what special names are given to these bacteria, Legionella and Chlamydia? Anyone who knows? Legionella and Chlamydia. They belong to which group of bacteria? Okay. We will look at what? Thank you. Am I getting you? Okay, let's proceed. 
positive organism is not identified in most uh, cases, about 40% uh, of the cases, the positive organism is not identified. So you treat empirically. You're looking at uh, the most common organism in your hospital or in the community. Okay. Now, security assessment is very important. The British Thoracic Society recommends that you use KEPS the five model as a means of satisfying the patient in two groups so that treatment can be directed according to severity, whether mild, moderate, or severe. So KEPS the five severity assessment model you assign one point for each of the following. So the case is the five. C means confusion. Then you need to ask the, 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 the person, the patient rather. You need to ask the, the patient if they know somebody, where they are, and the what time. If they fail those, one of the tests, it means they are confused. For instance, on the best side, you can just point at the relative. They know the relative. They say, the name, now no, it's President Lungu, who is with me, then you know that they are confused. Then you ask them, where, where are they? And then you ask if you some patient who says, no, they are in the stage, they are watching Zambia versus the Algeria. Then you know they are confused. What time is it in the morning? They will say, no. It's evening, then you grade. That's right. So it's so, so. Okay. You read here. Okay. That's the name of somebody that's the importance of. Okay. Mandela. Yes, sir. I, I have a question. Uh, you talked about confusion. Uh, okay. Asking those questions and whatnot. What if I uh, say the patient is. Uh, is a baby. What do you have to do to assess confusion? If the patient is the, the baby. Okay. As you can see, this severity assessment is for adults, not neonates. For KM65, it's for adults, not neonates. Mandela, are you with me? Yes, sir. We are together. That's the oh. notice. Thank you. Good. In 10 minutes, we'll be cut, then we join. Again, you need to measure respiratory rate. If it's greater than 30 beats per minute, you assign one mark. If it's less than that, zero. Blood pressure, systolic key of less than 90, diastolic key of less than 60, each you assign one point. If the age is greater than the five years, you assign also one point. So total six points. So if the after you calculate the step five, if it's one or zero to one, treat as done the beer. Okay. Two, you can use clinical judgment. You can treat as the then the beer or the beer depending on the what is the prevailing at that time, looking at the patient condition. Then if you have a score of three or more, you treat as severe critical. I mean the need of ICU and other things. Okay. Also, you look at the FNA if it's a bilateral or multiple of the movement. All those will also help you to come up with proper management. So the general goals for management of patients with CAP include the following. You need to give oxygen so that you maintain the pressure greater than 80 greater than 8 kilopascals or oxygen saturation between 
94 to 98 percent. Also, you need to give gravity, you assess the fluid intake for the patient, but hydration assessment, you can give it a better fluid. Also, these patients are prone to deep vein thrombosis, especially those that are severe, who have severe cup. So, you can do prophylaxis of an example of a milligram once daily. Also, nutrition support is very important. You want to make sure that. These patients eat well so that also their immunity is able to fight infections. Also, you can use chest physiotherapy to make sure that they are able to expand the sputum. So, physio has a role in these patients. Okay. Prefer the treatment. And alternative. Oral, you can give amoxicillin, 1 milligram to 1 gram, 3 times daily, plus or minus chlorpromycin. Alternative, you can give doxycycline, 20 milligram holding dose, or 100 milligram orally, plus chlorpromycin. Okay. If oral route is not possible, amoxicillin, 500 mg, 4 times daily IV or basal medicine, 1.2 grams, 4 times a day, plus chlorpromycin. Or levotoxacin, 500 mg, 4G, or moxifloxacin, 500 mg, 4 RM. If oral route is not possible, levotoxacin can be given 500 mg, 4G, IV. Okay. Back to my question I, I did ask earlier. If you prescribe a patient amoxicillin and chlorpromycin, what does a macrolide, what is covering a macrolide? Alfred Chomba. A macrolide is covering a typical bacteria. Absolutely. A typical bacteria, which is the Legionella, Chlamydia, those are typical bacteria. Okay. So, in the law of severe community acquired pneumonia, amoxicillin, TTS, orally, is enough. Motor is severe, head score of 2 plus, chlorpromycin should be added to amoxicillin. Okay, so that you cover for a typical. Monotherapy mm -hmm. for matter cannot be given if previous treatment with amoxicillin failed, or in cases where the patient is sensitive to penicillin. Okay, but Geotherapy is much safer option for initial treatment. Patients who are prone to QT interval prolongation, remember we discussed this, like women or any other, who can have prostate defaults due to macroid or penoron, you can use moxifloxacin. Although it has its advantages, a particularly adverse effect. No wonder I said mostly you need to do baseline lead back function test. Okay. What is the take home here? Low severe, cap, amoxicillin. If it's mild to severe, you can add a macroride tool. To Amoxicillin. For those who are at risk with QT interval prolongation, avoid macrolides and quinones, then use moxifloxacin. 
which is a good quinolone, don't have the QT prolongation effect. Now we let's look at the step down fish recommendation. Yeah, so we are looking at the step down fishing and microbial recommendations. The patient on IV, then when do you switch, which medication do you switch to for oral alternative? So if you are giving amoxicillin and piscillin, IV, you switch to amoxicillin oral. Tritromycin IV, it's advised that you switch to tritromycin oral. Amoxicraft IV, you switch to amoxicraft oral. Eucoxacin IV, you switch to eucoxacin oral. Mesopenicillin IV, Amoxicillin will be suitable for oral. Cephotanzin, cephotraxin, cephroxin for amoxicraft. Okay. So those are. Let me see some bit of them. If one will, I have a question for you. Are you there, Ibony? Yes, sir. Yes. In which situation would you want to switch from IV to oral? Maybe when the patient is uh, discharged from the hospital. Yes, that's correct. When the patient is being discharged, especially elderly patients, if they improve the fever after maybe day three, for instance, it's seven days treatment, then day three, the fever is dropped, they are able to tolerate oral, root, and uh, you can discharge, then they go and finish at home. You don't want to keep a, an elderly patient in the hospital. You may have happy hospital acquired, you're getting other infections. Okay. Stembe, any other situation in which you can switch from IV to oral? Uh, maybe when a patient experiences some um, infusion related side effects. Absolutely. Okay. They are able, maybe you can't find the uh, yeah, infusion related, like in the thrombophrebitis, inflammation of the veins, the veins are collapsing. You can switch to, to or Isaac, any other situation? You can switch from IV to oral. Isaac iPhone. Is Isaac with us? Okay, Chora. Uh, I'm not too sure, sir. Okay. Another thing is, no, especially in the source limited the places like uh, ours. IV medications are very expensive compared to oral. So, after the two or three, the patient is getting better and you want to save on the cost of treatment, you can switch to oral. That is if you really sure that the patient is improving. Okay. The duration of antibody treatment is between seven days to ten days. Seven days mostly non severe. If it's severe, commit acquired pneumonia, ten days. And duration may be extended further depending on the pathogen that is involved or any complications. Okay, so there's a theoretic effusion or run abscess, you may wish to extend maybe to 15 days. How do you monitor the patient? So monitoring of FCAS, you monitor the temperature. 
Okay. You want to have the temperature. Let me check if I can ask some people. Gibson PD, are you there? Gibson. Some people they don't want to respond. So that you know that they have problems with the connectivity. Anyway, Rhoda. I'm here, sir. Rhoda. It's Rhoda. Yes. Yes, Rhoda. The question I have for you is regarding temperature. Regarding temperature. Uh, if you initiate antibiotics, on which day would you want to expect the temperature at least to have uh, that dropping? Mm. Ah, I don't know, sir. If I were to guess, I would say day three. Mm. You are a good guesser. Really? Mm -hmm. Day three. Okay. <laughs> no wonder you did well at grade seven. You had eight hundred. So at day three, you should expect the temperature to start dropping. If the temperature is still spiking day three, then you might wish to consider alternative treatment. If it's oral, is the patient taking or in IV, you ask the nurses if the patient is admitted. If they are giving the medication, or oh, the issue may be resistant issue. Okay. Then you also start monitoring respiratory rate, the pulse, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, C-reactive protein should start dropping. All those features in the cave step five. Confusion, someone should be able, if they are improving, they should be able to identify the person, the place, and time. Urea should be able to drop. Respiratory rate should start dropping. Those were elevated. See, the actual protein should be at least less than 3 grams per liter. Okay? Yeah, although it's not a sensitive marker, it's, yeah, it's, more, it's more sensitive marker for pneumonia than what blood cells. Okay? Patients should be suitable for discharge only if no more than one of the following are present 24 hours before the anticipated discharge. Temperature should be less than 7, heart rate less than 100 beats per minute, especially rate at least less than 24 breaths per minute, historic blood pressure should be greater than 19 millimeter of mercury, and oxygen saturation should be at least not less than 90%. We are done with community acquired pneumonia. And if there are questions, we go straight to hospital acquired pneumonia. We should be finishing pretty soon. So, hospital acquired pneumonia and the ventilator associated pneumonia remain more important causes of mobility and mortality. American thoracic. Society defines HAP as pneumonia that occurs for 10 hours or more after admission, which was not incubating at the time of admission. Okay. The patient came in with other things. You do x ray, there was no consolidation of the lungs, everything was okay. After 48 hours or more, the patient presents with a pneumonia, then that would be hospital acquired. Pneumonia. The interpreter acquired pneumonia refers to pneumonia that arises more than 48 to 22 hours after endotracheal intubation. Those feeding tubes. Okay. On average, VAP occurs in 20 percent of all intubated patients. And it increases the rate of stay by an average of six days in the UK. I don't have Zambia statistics. I would have loved to give you that. So, 
sources of depression in hospital for pneumonia include healthcare devices or the, envir the, the environment and can occur with transfer or that is between staff and patients. So, those who are going into the world, you need to know infection control measures. I hope you have been guided on that. Because you can take a back, an infection from home into hospital to infect the patients. Or vice versa, you can get the infection from hospital back home. So, infection prevention, prevention is very important. So, before you go on the ward or in the, in the ward, make sure that you wash your hands, you sanitize yourself, and having a good diet is very, very important as well. So that you keep your immunity level at high. Not always, always sausage, sausage, sausage. I thought that there was a special listener. Okay. Eight different types of foods. Then after you do your hard rounds, wash your hands, sanitize, secure your lamp coat nicely. When you reach to your room, wash it. Okay. Those are the measures that you have to put in place. Positive organism for host apart pneumonia and ventilator apart pneumonia may be white, spectrum of bacteria, pathogens, and rarely viral pathogens. The most common of pathogens include Pseudomonas albinosa, E. coli, Gagicella pneumonia, and Cynobacter species. So, Pseudomonas albinosa, E. coli, Gagicella, these are the most causes of host apart pneumonia or ventilator apart pneumonia. Infections due to staph warriors, particularly the heat resistant staph warriors, are becoming more common, especially in ICU settings. Okay. What are the risk factors for developing host apart pneumonia? If there are comorbidities on the patient, that's one of the risk factors. Others, alcohol misuse. I just talked about it on my malnutrition. I was emphasizing you guys that you should be eating well. Okay? Vegetables, fruits, and things like that. Some of you, gifts on period. When did you, when was the last time you ate fruits? Period, are you there? Am I on mute? Okay. okay, let me go for another Easter now or another to get longer. But uh, when did you last eat food? Masaya Piri. Yes, that is. Okay, good. There's an answer I got last time. Somebody said, no, last time I was admitted in the hospital. And that's when people would bring a lot of food, all kinds of food. Okay. Diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, COPD, other patients, patients with the skin problems. Especially those with difficulty in swallowing and impaired conscious are at risk of getting half and the ventilator acidic pneumonia. Antibiotic treatment, you have to direct your treatment according to your local antibiotic policies, should guide you because what's the point the organisms? They differ from one hospital to another. You go to let be the most prevalent cause of hospital uh, pneumonia could be E. coli. You come to ETH to the monas. So your hospital, your local antibiotic policy at the hospital should direct you 
on how to treat the patient. Okay. So the use of age and appropriate therapy is very, very important. And avoid excess of antibiotics and the escalating the initial therapy based on the cancer results and the patient clinical response. Aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia of GNB from oropharyngeal secretions with rapid colonization. This is also similar to the greater pneumonia. And this may occur in patients with loss of uh, gap reflex or alcoholic stroke victims, head injury patients or patients receiving general anesthetics. Especially pneumonia, most common organisms are Tepecoccus viridans. And the treatment, mostly you have to use metronidazole plus amoxicillin. Metronidazole is to cover anaerobics. Okay. I think that's the end. Unless we have questions. If there are no questions, let's quickly look at the case study. We won't answer it, you will answer it in your own free time. I'll just read through. Then you can look at it. Who can read? Loyan Dokacha. Can you read that? Loyando is not ready. Trisha? Yes. Is your network okay? Sorry, sir. You can read the text and if your network is okay. Okay, it says Mississippi. A 74-year-old woman was admitted at Amel uh -huh. Architect. Uh -huh. At medical and, emergency unit. Uh -huh. And at medical emergency unit at GTH at 14.30 with a three-day history of productive, productive cough, fever, shortness of breath, and pleurisy. A portable chest x-ray taken at adult medical emergency unit shows consolidation in the right lower lobe of her lungs, and she is admitted to hospital in EO2 under Unit 3. Mississippi is 162 centimeters, weighs 82 kg, is a smoker, and has a medical history of ischemic heart failure. Her current medication includes aspirin 75 milligrams OD, simvastatin 40 milligrams OM, atenolol 25 milligrams OD, and glycerol trinitrate. Sublingo spray PRN. On examination, her vital signs are recorded as follows Heart rate 110 beats per minute, temperature 38.2 degrees, respiratory rate 26 breaths per minute, blood pressure 140 over 92 milli per mercury. Oxygen saturation 89% on 2 liters per minute oxygen. Plant investigations include 1. Blood cultures, 2. Sputum cultures, 3. Urea and electrolytes and full blood count, 4. C-reactive protein, 5. Liver function test, 6. Electrocardio electrocardiogram, 7. Troponin 1, 8. D. Dimer, nine urine for bacterial serology. Okay, so that is token in I, not one. Okay. Uh -huh. oh. yes. I continue? Sure. So one says the patient is assessed on the major rounds at 9 30 hours the following morning and is noted to have improved slightly with saturations currently at 95% on two liters per minute of oxygen. Her ECG is unremarkable. The following lab investigations are relevant. One, creatinine in 1 over 10, 
micromobiliter estimated creatinine clearance 4 milliliters per minute. <coughs> Urea 9.6 millimoles per liter, the normal ones are in brackets, then CRP 164 milligrams per liter, then white cell count 28 times 109 per liter, the neutral fuse 25 times 109 per liter. Number two, formulate the pharmacotherapy plan for this patient. Then number three, what is the significance of these lab findings? Number three, Assess the severity of illness in this patient. Blood culture results have been found to the world reporting one positive cocci in one culture bottle. Further identification and antibiotic sensitivity testing are pending. Number four, what are the possible interpretations of this microbiology results? Number five, how should therapy be monitored? Okay, and that's the end of the lecture. So you do this case in a hundred times, then in the future we will find time when we can do